What's going on, Internet? This is James Cooper, and you're watching Relative Motion, the channel all about teaching you the best means of getting you wherever you need to go. And I'm really excited today to do a little fork in the road and start a new season. So the next season we're going to be looking at on Relative Motion is going to be about the best hydromatic and sports submarines that you can buy. Yep, you heard me right. We're going to take a deep dive into submarines. A hydrobatic submarine takes the idea of aerobatic airplanes and transforms the same principles to underwater. So as the sports submarines, they're obviously the fastest and they're also the most maneuverable for doing these hydrobatics. So these submarines are more just about having fun than anything else. Which if I owned a submarine, that would definitely be on my checklist. Because I don't know how you get in one of these without a giant smile on your face. And in this episode, you're especially going to have a smile on your face because we're taking a look at the Deep Flight Dragon, which is just as awesome as it sounds. This submarine with six giant thrusters all over it and being so tiny is what I would call the most agile submarine that you can buy on the planet. So this submarine is made by Deep Flight. What you're going to find dominates this particular list of submarines. And this is because this is mostly what their submarines are designed for. They're more designed for just having fun than research or anything else. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And they are really good at what they're supposed to do. Just to start with the looks of this thing, it's like a quadcopter and a Formula One car had a baby. And then with the half spherical acrylic viewports that this submarine has, I'd even say it almost looks like a flying car from the Jetsons. And this thing also acts like one underwater. So I don't think that comparison is too much of a stretch. The depth this submarine can go to is about 330 feet. Which you'll come to find watching this season is one of the most important stats obviously on a submarine. But maybe this is one of the lists where it's not as important because these submarines are just for fun. Now even though this is one of the smallest subs that you can buy, it still comes with a pretty hefty price tag that you might not expect of 1.5 million dollars. And actually relatively speaking, I wouldn't say this is a super unfair price for this thing. Which might be surprising to hear as well. But I'm here to tell you, there's nothing cheap about making a submarine. But I'm not going to get too much into that here. And I'll save that topic for a later date. So like I said, this is equipped with two seats. And even though it's advertised as a single pilot submarine, best I can tell, it actually can be piloted from both seats. And one of the reasons I believe this is this submarine has external gauges, which are pretty cool to begin with. But as you can see, they're actually on both seating positions, which is just another reason that leads me to believe this can be dual piloted. So who is this sub ideally for? Well, for one thing, as I've mentioned already, the sub is super compact and is actually one of the design features they really put into this submarine. And the reason for this is this model submarine of their lineup was really designed to be put on large yachts and to be launched from a crane. And its compact size helps with storing it on smaller yachts, relatively speaking here of course. Some of the other design features they obviously put into this for making it really easy to launch from a yacht is the fact it's really lightweight at only 4,000 pounds, which makes it easier to find a crane that can handle lifting this submarine. So if you're looking for a submarine with a really small footprint to put on a boat, or maybe even for your garage, this is definitely a sub to look at. And would also be the smallest sub available for purchase if it wasn't for the sports sub, which we will definitely talk about later on this channel. And is a great entry submarine because it's a lot cheaper than one of these. And they start around $75,000 and go up from there quickly. The other reason people like these for yachts is compared to some submarines on this list. This one's fairly easy to control with having the standard configuration of a joystick and a thruster to maneuver around. And like I said, with this having so many thrusters, it's extremely agile at getting it exactly where you want it. And you'll definitely come to find that this style of controls is probably the most common standardized controls between submarines, since they can actually be controlled in many different ways. And the last thing worth noting there might also be a reason someone might purchase this. It's the obvious, but maybe not so obvious fact that submarines make great lifeboats. Which unfortunately a lot of ships are lacking unless they're very large. So if you do have one of these stashed on your yacht, and it happens to start going down, 
You could actually potentially jump in it as a lifeboat. Or as far as lifeboats go, I'm going to tell you, this is probably not the first submarine I'd pick for a lifeboat. For some reasons that might make more sense a little bit later. Now, this giant wing on the back of this submarine, it really helps towards giving this the appearance of the Formula One car. This giant wing, I'm going to assume, helps put downforce on the submarine when it's moving forward to help stabilize it through the water. And best I can tell, this spoiler doesn't move at all. Which is unfortunate because I think it would give this a really good ability to trim the submarine as you're going forward. As far as your attitude goes, which just simply means the angle at which you're going up or down. However, it does appear that these two tiny fins at the front might actually be diving planes. Now, diving planes, which I'll talk a lot about in these videos, are simply the controls for submarines that act really similar to wings on an airplane and help control the movement of the submarine through the water. And as I was saying, I really think these front fins might actually move, which I think would be a huge help to helping this submarine be really easy to control moving through the water. Not that it already isn't having six thrusters on it though, but as you'll come to find out on these lists, since submarines are so rare, it's pretty hard to find information on these. So unfortunately, I'm trying to make do with the most information I have available to me. Now I guess one of the reasons also, I really hope this has a set of diving planes in the front, is that you'll come to find another really important characteristic that I think of submarines is how many ways they have to surface. Because although it might not jump to your head right away, submarines are actually as dangerous and maybe even more dangerous than flying. Because if you do crash, so to speak, you just sink and then you'll be crushed by the pressure of the ocean. Which is not a good day. So, when you have failures on your submarine, the more ways you have to surface, the more safe it is theoretically then. So back to this submarine, if it actually does have front diving planes, this gives it another way it can surface. Because if all else fails, it can use its back thrusters to push it forward and the bow dive planes to pitch the attitude of the submarine up to return it to the surface. Now the other three ways this submarine could return to the surface, the next and most obvious way would be with the four thrusters located around this submarine that it uses to control going up and down. Another interesting method that this has to surface, which is pretty uncommon, is it actually has emergency flotation bags that will inflate. However, be aware, when you're dealing with the extreme pressures of the ocean, they can be really significant. So I'm not quite sure how deep you can actually use these emergency floats and have them still work without the pressure of the ocean allowing them not to inflate. Although I imagine it's a fair amount of distance, I'm not quite sure it's going to be the full depth of the 330 feet that this thing can dive. So just be aware of that. And then the fourth and final way that this can surface is actually all on its own. Now this is the feature I haven't talked about yet, but it's maybe one of the most significant features of the deep flight submarines, is the fact that they actually have a positive buoyancy all the time. And a positive buoyancy just simply means, if all things are equal, naturally this submarine will just rise to the surface slowly. Now the reason other submarines wouldn't do this, is most submarines actually contain a ballast system. And a ballast system actually allows you to change, theoretically, the weight or density of the submarine, which thus allows the submarine to sink, float, or do all the maneuvers that it wants to do going up and down in the water. Now while there's a disadvantage to having ballast tanks, that you can have either a neutral buoyancy or a negative buoyancy, which would cause you to sink. If you don't have this system, like this one doesn't, you're going to always be positively buoyant. So this type of situation would never occur. However, because this submarine is always positively buoyant, the submarine is constantly fighting the submarine itself to stay down underwater, which as you can imagine, uses a lot of energy. So having a positive buoyant submarine decreases the efficiency of the submarine from the fact you can't make the submarine neutrally buoyant and just sit in the water using minimal battery power. You always have to be running some sort of motor to keep you in place if that's where you want to stay. However, I really can't hate too much on this for the fact these deep flight submarines are positively buoyant because they're not really designed for going underwater and just sitting there. They're more designed, as all the submarines on this list are, for having fun and, for the most part, always being moving. Because if you have a hydrobatic or sports sub, I would say that's going to be mostly what you're doing. Now the last thing I want to touch on here quickly about deep flight submarines. Like I've said, these are really designed for having fun underwater. So they're designed for flipping over, doing barrel rolls, and all sorts of those fun maneuvers. So they should all come with a built-in harness, which a lot of submarines will not have. So, 
you can go completely inverted and stay right in your seat, which is definitely going to be a really fun experience. Compared to the other two deep flight submarines that we're going to touch on in this season, this one might have the best vertical down speed for the fact it has these four down and up thrusters. Even though a deep flight Falcon can go completely inverted, I still don't think it's going to be able to beat the Dragon at going up and down. However, if you're using all four motors a lot, that's really going to kill your battery pretty quickly. Now the pressure vessel of the deep flight submarines is really interesting, maybe compared to a lot of the others. For the fact, besides the windows on this machine, which like I mentioned before, each person has their own half dome viewport, which I'd say overall for a submarine is probably about medium visibility. It's not great, but it's not bad. The rest of the pressure vessel of the deep flight is made completely of composites. Now the pressure vessel, like it might sound, just simply means the actual vessel of the submarine that contains the pressure of the ocean pushing in on the submarine back and keeps the submarine from crushing. So obviously it's very important. Now the advantage of having this composite pressure vessel is just like how a lot of high pressure bottles are now going to composite. They're a lot more reliable, stronger, and lighter weight than a similar metal bottle. And I think the biggest difference here being that composite doesn't really degrade over time, especially compared to metal, because it obviously doesn't rust. And if you have a steel pressure vessel on your submarine, it obviously can rust. Which of course, if left unattended, could definitely weaken the structure of the submarine. So it's pretty expensive, but I definitely say composite is the way to go if you have any sort of choice. Especially because it allows you to make really cool and intricate designs that you see on this submarine. And with that, I'm going to wrap up this overview of the Deep Flight Dragon. Now, if you think this submarine's as cool as I do, I'd love to hear about it down in the comments below. And of course, if you want to see more submarines on this list, consider hitting that subscribe button below so you won't miss any of those videos. Like the next episode in this season, we're taking a look at the classic and first Deep Flight submarine, the Deep Flight Super Falcon, which I don't think is unfair to call the underwater fighter jet and check out that video if you want to see why this submarine is as fun as it sounds. And until next time, I'm James Cooper and you've been watching Relative Motion. For some reasons that might make Mike... For some reasons that Mike Mike...